Hello everyone, my name is Haley Elizabeth and if you don't know who I am, I post videos pertaining to whatever I want really. Vlogs, conspiracy theories, controversial people, true crime, and all things spooky, scary, skeletons. So if you're into any of that, you can subscribe and if not, no hard feelings, no hard feelings. Like let's just chill, let's relax, let's do some makeup, get your snacks, get your water, let's, let's snuggle in, have a good time. I'm sorry if I sound like sick. It's because I am. It's not COVID, don't worry, but I am sick with like a cold. I was gonna take the week off, but then I was like, you know what? I literally can't. Like, I miss you guys way too much. Oh yeah, this is my last video of 2021. Special news for 2022 um, by the end of the video. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. But if not, and you're like, I'm new here, speed it up, get to the conspiracy theories. Okay, 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 I hear you. I hear you. We're starting right now. Before getting into the rest of today's video, I do want to give a big thank you to Warby Parker for sponsoring today's video. Warby Parker is a boutique quality eyewear brand that offers things like eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and even eye exams. All of that at a revolutionary price point with their glasses starting at $95. Today, I tried Warby Parker's free home try-on program. You go on their website, you take a short quiz, it takes just a couple of minutes, and you pick five different frames that you would like to, you know, try out and see if you would look good in before committing to an actual pair. What I really like about the quiz is that it also shows you options based on your face shape, which I think is really helpful. And once you actually receive them, there is no obligation to actually buy them. They are just there to help you. So I went and took the Warby Parker at home quiz, which by the way, was so, so easy. And I was also very surprised that this this is like actually free, you know? Like sometimes people will tell you, oh yeah, it's free, but then you go to check out and there's like a $16 shipping cost. This was genuinely free. I just got my Warby Parker try-ons in the mail and I'm so, so excited. I'm so glad that I'm able to actually try on the glasses, look at myself in the mirror, try out different angles and styles. First one I'm trying on is the Percy glasses, which is very similar to the glasses that I wear every day anyway so that's probably why I love these so much. Percy glasses are a nice like orange yellow nice neutral smoky color. When I was doing my quiz I decided to go a little bit crazy and get some blue glasses. Oh my god I look like where's Waldo? Hello? Yeah no I literally these are the Morgan glasses in Baltic blue and I'm so glad. Shout out to Warby Parker because how embarrassing it would have been if I actually bought these and then I'm like, oh no, I don't like them. I'm gonna be trying on the Lyle glasses. These are more like rectangular glasses. I usually get circle glasses, but I thought, wow, like these are actually, wait. The fourth pair that I'm gonna be trying on is the Wright glasses in the shade Rosemary Crystal. This is a beautiful sea green color. I really like these. I might actually get these. They're bold but not too bold, which I really, really like. Never had clear glasses, but I've always seen people wearing clear glasses. The Haxel glasses in the shade Crystal. Also, can we talk about what like amazing quality these glasses are as well? They're not your typical like we put this together in five minutes. You can tell that these were handled with care and the quality is really, really good. Meaning that if you drop these or something, they're not going to, you know, fall apart. This is like, this is a dream come true. I'm able to review my options as well as, you know, like go in a little bit out of my comfort zone, cover up my address and stuff. It comes with a shipping label. So again, you don't even have to really pay you sending it back. All you need to do is slap on the label and you're done. Warby Parker gives you up to five business days to send them back with the prepaid label. I actually received my actual prescription pair. Dun dun dun. You guys want to see which one I picked? Based on a poll given to like family members and friends. These are the Delphine glasses and I absolutely love these glasses. I was so surprised when I put them on and they like 
were my prescription. How the process works is that when you're done with the at-home try-on, you send the box back and then you go back online and then you buy the actual pair that you fell in love with. You can either go to one of their retail locations and get an eye exam or you can just like send a picture of your prescription. These were like my only pair of glasses that I owned and now it's just like life is just so much more fun with new glasses. And actually almost 1 billion people worldwide lack access to glasses, meaning that 15% of the global population cannot learn effectively, work effectively, and that's why Warby Parker actually teams up with nonprofit organizations such as Vision Spring to ensure that every pair of glasses that are sold, another pair is then distributed to someone in need. So Warby just wants you to live your best life, see the world and see it clearly. If you actually want your own pair of Warby Parker glasses, if you use my link warbyparker.com slash Haley or click on the link in the description box, you could actually get your own pair of the at-home try-ons. As I said, it's completely free. There's literally, there is no bad side of doing this. And if you're the type of person that's like, uh, I kind of want to do this, but I don't want to do it online, Warby Parker actually has a ton of retail locations across the map and so if you go to warbyparker.com slash Haley you could also look at the nearest retail location near you and shop in person. Again that's warbyparker.com slash Haley or click the link down below. I absolutely love these glasses and I'm never gonna take them off so thank you so much and now back to your video. The first conspiracy theory we're gonna start off with is the John F. Kennedy assassination. November 22nd of 1963 John F. Kennedy president of of the United States was in a car in Dallas, Texas, kind of doing a parade when all of a sudden three shots came out of nowhere and one of those shots hitting John F. Kennedy and killing him. In the car was John F. Kennedy, his wife, and the governor of Dallas, Texas named John B. Canale Jr. They were actually able to catch footage of the event by someone in the crowd that was filming the entire thing. From a close analysis of the video footage, it showed that all of the shots were coming from a sixth story window of this corner building so when they went up there to investigate the area they actually found a rifle and a bunch of bullet casings in the sixth story window where the bullets had came from assuming that the person whoever did this basically just dropped off all of their ammo and gear and just left the person that was suspected of all of this was a man by the name of lee howard lee howard was actually on his way to go to the police to confess but on his way to the police station he was actually killed by a guy named Jack Ruby. The route had a total of 20,000 windows, but none of them were being monitored. It said that the route was made by the Secret Service and included lots of turns, meaning that the car was bound to go a little bit slower than if it was just moving straight. A week after the vice president, Lyndon B. Johnson, was then uh, pronounced as president, his first thing in office was to open up the Warren Commission, which was basically a commission to help solve the murder of John F. Kennedy. So after intense interrogation and lots of investigation about this case, they concluded that it was indeed, in fact, Lee Howard that actually shot John F. Kennedy, but for unknown reasons. But the reasons that the Warren Commission came up with is that Lee Howard actually acted out of free will and he wasn't working with anyone. He was actually working alone. It was also said that Lee Howard worked at the building that he actually shot the president at. They concluded that Lee Howard was basically just working by himself. He was all to blame, but since he was dead, there was really no one that they could charge these crimes with. It was also said by background information of Lee Howard that he just recently tried to renounce his U.S. citizenship. That basically means that you don't want to be a citizen anymore because you now want to be a full-time citizen somewhere else. In Lee's case, he was trying to renounce his U.S. citizenship so he could move to Russia and be a full-time time Russian citizen. Lee also as a child was very very well trained in guns. He was actually one of the best sharpshooters in his area. Lee Howard was actually under like heavy surveillance by the FBI and knew that he was going to be in Dallas but for some reason the FBI never told the CIA about Lee's behavior and to check all of the windows. They basically just let it go under radar. Aside from his 
background and who he was as a person. They actually needed hardcore like evidence and proof. By the bullet casings found in the car, it was bullet casings from a 6.5 millimeter rifle, which Lee was in possession of. Lee was also working at the building where he shot the president at. Lee actually also tried to kill a general a couple months prior. So that kind of shows his premeditated hatred for government officials, that on top of him trying to renounce his citizenship. So there were a total of three shots fired. The first shot shot absolutely no one, like it was just on the sidewalk. The second shot had actually shot both JFK and the governor through the magic bullet theory. I'll insert a visual for you to better understand. It went through his neck, through his chest, out through his chest and into the governor in front of him through his chest, through his wrist, and then through his thigh. Now, this is where the conspiracy theories come in because, as I said, Lee Oswald just so happened to, like, be working by himself and acted out of free will. And then when he tried to confess to the police, he was shot by a random person. All of that combined, this clearly shows that there is something else going on. Theory number one is that Lee Oswald was actually intentionally trying to kill the both of them and not just JFK. Lee was trying to denounce his citizenship. He was actually denied his renounce of citizenship in hopes to kill both people. That is where the magic bullet theory comes in. I opened up the window because I thought that would be like better lighting. But a lot of people didn't really believe in this theory because they thought that from the angle that Lee was shooting at, it would be very impossible for him to hit such a strategic and specific way to hit both of them. As I said, Lee was like a trained sharpshooter as a kid. If he wanted to hit the both of them, he would have successfully hit the both of them. Three years later in 1966, the governor that was actually in the car with JFK came out in an interview to say his like traumatic experience. He also believes that there was definitely more than one shooter. Also be due to him like under a lot of PTSD and stress, he's probably not you know, remembering things, but he definitely feels like in the moment there were more than one shooter. Also due to witnesses, a witness by the name of James. James basically said that after he heard the first bullet, he started to run. And as he started to run, he heard the second bullet go off. But when the second bullet went off, it also hit the sidewalk and actually grazed his cheek, meaning that the second shot did not go through both people. There had to be more than one shot. Another piece of evidence proving that there was more than one shot. As I said, someone was filming the entire thing and this piece of footage was heavily analyzed through the investigation by the Warren Commission. After a lot of audio analysis, it was said that you could actually hear around six shots in the film, not just three. And a lot of people that were there also say that there were a lot more than just three shots. Now, the second theory actually has to do with Lyndon B. Johnson, the vice president. A lot of people believe possibly Lyndon B. Johnson probably had JFK assassinated so he could then become president. Prior to JFK, Lyndon B. Johnson was actually also running for presidency, but then eventually just got vice president to JFK because JFK saw a lot of potential in Lyndon's campaigns and what he wanted for the country, etc., etc. So that is when he became vice president. He felt like vice president wasn't enough. He felt like he wasn't getting as much responsibilities as he wanted to. He wasn't as in power as he wanted to. There was also a lot of shady things that Lyndon would do around the offices. It was said that Lyndon would frequently ask John F. Kennedy if he could do some of his like senator work because he was also the senator of Dallas, Texas, which is ironic because that's exactly where he got assassinated. And he would frequently ask JFK to do some of his work for him in exchange for Lyndon doing some of John F. Kennedy's work. A lot of people believe that this is so Lyndon could kind of, you know, get the swing of things, try to figure out how things ran as president. So when he did become president, it was a lot easier of a transition. He actually is the one that suggested JFK to go out there in the first place. Now, there are a lot of, you know, weird things about this, you know, Texas. They're very aggressive with their political views. They tend to 
swing a specific way. So JFK and JFK's brother, because JFK's brother actually went with JFK and his brother were both warned by a bunch of like Texas officials that the political climate in Dallas, Texas is dangerous to be in. And there really is no political control there either. So if JFK does go there, there is a possibility that he might get harmed in some way. A woman actually came forward that was a mistress to Lyndon B. Johnson and she said that the night before the assassination, she was at a party with Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon started to get to drinking. He actually whispered in her ear. He said, after tomorrow, the Kennedys will never embarrass me again. That is not a threat, that's a promise. As far as this woman's statement, there really wasn't like any proof, just basically her word on it. And so because there were no like witnesses to this statement, it was basically one girl's word. They couldn't really, you know, do anything with this. They couldn't really arrest Lyndon because there just wasn't enough evidence against him. And a lot of people like to back up this theory, like in defense to Lyndon saying that after he was, you know, declared presidency, one of the first things that he did was start an investigation on JFK's murder. But a lot of people also believe that isn't it ironic that he's the one who started this whole commission and then the way that he went about it, blaming it all on a dead person that isn't even alive to testify, saying that he worked alone and there were like no other parties involved. It was very suspicious for him to just like start this whole commission just to sweep it under the rug as quickly as possible. Now, the third theory to this conspiracy theory is of course, the Russians because no one hates the Russians more than any political candidate in America. So they believed that during this time, it was also around the time of the Cold War. And since Lee actually went back and forth to Russia quite frequently, as well as trying to renounce his American citizenship, that the FBI had a close surveillance on Lee, it was because they suspected Lee to be a Russian spy. But a lot of people don't really believe in this theory including me myself. The Cold War being so recent, the Americans already freshly hate the Soviet Union. What sense would it make to hire a Russian to assassinate a US president. The first person Americans are gonna point the finger at is Russia because they have a recent beef with Russia. What sense would it make for Russia to send a Russian hitman on the president. It would make more sense if they sent like an American hitman, then it would look like just a American that shot the president. That's why a lot of people don't believe in that theory. And that's also why I don't really believe in that theory. I just think it's too obvious. And the fifth and final theory is that they believe that it was actually because of JFK's snooping around that eventually got him killed. About a month or two prior to the actual assassination, JFK had asked to review all of the UFO sighting and alien documents and extra extraterrestrial. It's in that one Katy Perry song. Um, you're an alien. Extraterrestrial. Ex period. You know what I'm talking about. Around this time in like night, which we'll also talk about later on, in 1969, I believe, that is when the first moon landing had occurred. So he thought if we can land on the moon, then we could probably communicate with life outside of this earth. FBI did not feel like it was a good idea to go public with this information because they feel like the public may spin it around. Rather, if it's just a few people that know about it, it's easier to, you know, come up with conclusions have civil conversations because once it's out in the public and everybody's talking about it, it's easier to keep it quiet. But as for JFK, he felt like it could be a really big and helpful thing if they went public with this information. And JFK was actually planning on going public with this information. But right before he was about to, he gets assassinated. So a lot of people believe that that was the reason why he was assassinated. That is basically all the theories I found for JFK. Let me know in the comments below which one you guys believed in. Oh my God, I sound like a Buzzfeed video. Comment down below your favorite conspiracy theory to this video. Make sure to give it a big like. I personally believe that I did it. <gasps> even though I wasn't even born. I'm sick. <laughs> Boo hoo, cry me a river, Haley. We're kind of
I'm gonna like smoothly transition into our next conspiracy topic that has to do with what we were just talking about the moon landing basically on May 25th of 1961 John F Kennedy proposed the idea that by the end of the decade they were going to successfully make it to the moon it was called a space race with the Soviet Union where basically the Soviet Union had their own set of space travel and stuff and they were basically trying to race of which country could make it to the moon first and in 1966 they actually constructed the Apollo mission basically start their training in 1967 during one of their trainings the training set actually caught on fire and ended up killing three astronauts in the process but they successfully completed the mission on July 16th of 1969 on live television the whole United States saw Apollo 11 leave planet Earth and go off into space. Now, this was a huge moment in history, not just American history, but all over as well. As I said, we were in this space race with the Soviet Union. It was insane to see people actually going to the moon. Four days later on July 20th, that is when the space team had successfully reached the moon. I don't really know what they did specifically. All I know is that they went on live television from space. They were able to catch a signal from space to earth basically live stream the entire thing oh no nobody tell mr beast because y'all already know what he's gonna do we oh, oh, oh we played squid games on the moon uh, squid game and then fortnite on the moon no i'm not going to talking about people in that way is a thing of the past for me even though I literally just did it. <laughs> this all was happening at 10.39 p.m. At 10.56 p.m. is when they actually showed Neil Armstrong going on the moon. When they were on the moon, Neil Armstrong put a American flag into the moon, and then that was the end of that. After this, a lot of, you know, the conspiracy theorists and skeptics started to erupt and realize a lot of inconsistencies with this footage and how odd it was how just two years ago they had a deadly training and then just two years later they're successfully able to go in to the moon but you're probably wondering like Haley why would they even lie about going to the moon in the first place well as I said they were actually in a space race with the Soviet Union so they thought that if they sped things up a little bit pretended like they went to the moon then they could actually win win the space race and they would be declared all of that you know ego now the first inconsistency that a lot of people point out with the footage is the waving flag since there is no gravity and there is no breeze up in space why is the flag waving a lot of people have debunked this theory saying that there was actually a pole on top of the flag for aesthetic purposes it would be a lot easier if you could see the whole flag so they put a pole on top top to give it the effect like it's waving. This is a pretty common theory that I see a lot of people use. That's why I wanted to debunk it right out the door because I feel like a lot of people genuinely do wonder why it was waving. Second conspiracy that there are no stars in the pictures at all. In none of the footage or the pictures is there a single star in the sky than being in space at all and being so close to these huge stars that you would see at least one. The government has also came forward about this conspiracy theory and saying that since they were so close to the sun, all of the light that emitted from these stars was just ruled out by the powerfulness of the sun. And that was the reasoning as to why you could not see any of that. A lot of people in association with this conspiracy theory also mentioned that in their training process, when they were trying to replicate scenarios of them being on the moon, they had to make a lot of mock-ups of the moon uh, for like training purposes there were no stars in the background probably training wasn't going as fast as they wanted it to go a way to fake the moon landing and make it look like they had landed when in fact they hadn't a lot of people debunk this theory again and say we literally saw the rocket leave earth what do you mean that the moon landing was fake this is where the conspiracy within the conspiracy erupts a lot of people believe something happened on the moon that we weren't 
weren't able to predict on earth because we had never been to the moon people just weren't really knowing what to expect things did not go as planned turn out they couldn't actually go to the moon in the way that they wanted to go to the moon but since people had already seen the rocket leave people were at home all over the world were expecting to see something because how embarrassing would it be if they had to come back and be like actually guys we weren't able to do it successfully so instead to kind of you know eliminate all of the embarrassment they decided to fake a moon landing footage in order to you know revive themselves but something as big as this you're probably wondering now who could be the ringleader of all of this a government official that is actually where the third and final conspiracy about the moon landing comes in stanley kubrick you probably know him from his famous movies such as the shining and lolita he actually directed the cameras the directing and the producing of the entire thing possibly blackmail or some sort of money promise because of the clues that kubrick gives in his movie the shining if you've never seen the shining it's fine because same the shining is basically about this young boy um that does young boy things such as seeing dead people even though i claim to be a diehard stephen king fan in the shining movie there were a lot of things that had to do with the moon landing why would he randomly put in a bunch of like very small details about the moon landing if he wasn't involved in it maybe he was just really obsessed with the moon landing the main little boy he is frequently walking around with a sweater that says apollo 11 and there's this one specific scene in the movie where he goes into the room to 237 and 237 is actually the same set number as the room that they were like doing practice runs of the moon landing at nasa and it was quite ironic how when the little boy was walking into this room he had on an apollo 11 space sweater meaning that apollo 11 was walking onto set and by the end of the movie he actually destroys the sweater which also could be symbolism for you know kubrick's hatred for the u.s government for putting him in this situation did i just break my glamnetic eyeliner dun 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 oh no i just broke my glamnetic eyeliner there was actually a documentary in 2012 called room 237 where in this documentary they go over all of these small clues that was found in the shining and also in 1968 stanley had made a movie by the name of space odyssey proving that space sets could be recreated on movie sets now besides just like speculation there's no actual concrete evidence like people never saw the two have ties and that's basically all of the big conspiracies that i found about the space landing if there's any more let me know um i'm on my buzzfeed stuff again let me know in the comments below guys now we're gonna move on to our third and final conspiracy topic and that is chemtrails what is chemtrails chemtrails are essentially what people believe whenever you look up in the sky and you see an airplane in the sky and then following the airplane is a line of like white smoke a lot of people believe that that white smoke is what's called a chemtrail meaning it's a trail of chemicals that the government puts out in order to poison our air do things like make us easier to manipulate this like conspiracy topic i feel like is so insane to me because i could not believe that there were actual documents talking about all of this insanity 1996 the u.s uh, air force decided to release a report talking about their hopes for weather manipulation i'll leave it down below and i highly encourage you to read through it because it's so insane see for yourself and read it through yourself but if you don't feel like reading all of that i'm basically just going to give you the summary the summary is is that basically the u.s air force was talking about them wanting to use a weather modification weather modification can be used for war in order to manipulate the weather we need to figure out ways on how to manipulate the weather and in order to manipulate the weather a big thing
thing that all weather cycles have in common is the air. So if there is a way for us to manipulate the chemistry in the air, possibly we could also manipulate the weather. They needed three things, technique, transmission, and capabilities, which in this proposal, they were asking for suggestions on what they should do regarding that. They would be able to basically kill people without even touching them if they were able to make the weather super cold or super hot, which is also less work for the Americans because they could just go about, you know, killing people that they see and then let the weather do the rest. Also in this report, they talk about how in 2015, they hope to seed the clouds, put certain chemicals in the clouds. And this theory was kind of proved back in 2008 when Beijing was holding the Olympics. A lot of people who were out there that day, just like watching the Olympics, thought that it was really odd that in some places it was like pouring rain, while in other places it was just perfectly normal. And the places that it was perfectly normal at were the entire Olympic area. People were thinking that possibly Beijing was the first to practice all of this in order to manipulate the weather for like a better turnout for the Olympics. 2008, there was a woman by the name of Suzanne Mayer. Suzanne Mayer is a spokesperson for this company that she made called Bye Bye Blue Skies, basically like an anti-chemtrail, like raising awareness for chemtrails. In an interview with the BBC, she actually stated that she thought it was really odd that all of the clouds before 1996 were a lot bluer than they are now. And she never saw these chemtrails in the sky prior to 1996 when the US Air Force had proposed this idea of manipulating the weather. And it isn't just wild conspiracy theorists that believe in this theory. There are a lot of really big names that also believe in this chemtrail conspiracy theory, such as Jaden Smith and Kylie Jenner. Famous artist Prince in a 2009 interview actually said that he thought it was pretty odd that as soon as these chemtrails started to show up, there had been so much more violence in the world for no reason. People were just getting mad at each other for the smallest things. The government later came out about this theory once it started to get really big, saying that there is no such thing as these chemtrails, basically what these white lines in the sky are. Up in the air, it is so cold, and then the engine of the plane being so hot, them two mixed up can actually create water vapor. He said that extraordinary claims need extraordinary proof. And in this situation, there just is no, oh, my light turned off and in this situation they just have no extraordinary proof to give. When looking deeper into this I was actually looking at the um, like crime rate since 1996. Surprisingly since 1996 the crime rate in the U.S. has went down even though the population has significantly went up which I thought was really crazy but then it also makes you think like why would the government want to voluntarily create chaos? Like the world is already bad why would they want to make it worse? And that is the last and and final conspiracy theory topic that I have for you guys today. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We talked about chemtrails and how they're manipulating the actual weather and there's US Air Force reports to prove that. We also talked about um, the moon landing and how it could or could not be possibly fake and then we also talked about the assassination of John F. Kennedy. I hope you guys found this video interesting and if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. I I really missed doing conspiracy videos because I really really like these type of videos. These were like my favorite ones to do. I went for this look today. I thought that since it's New Year's on Friday, I would dress up for the occasion even though I was like kind of dying the entire time because I'm sick. So sorry if this wasn't like as funny or something. I don't know. I love joking around in these because I can actually like tell jokes. In my true crime videos, I can't really like say jokes because oh my god, no. I wouldn't even want to say jokes. Merry Christmas if you celebrate that. Uh, Christmas Eve is tomorrow and Christmas Day is Friday. I got all of my Christmas shopping done. Can I get a high five? Oh, Thanks. And if you want to follow me on any of my social medias, like my Instagram, that will be linked down below, as well as my PO box if you want to send me anything. And also, also all of the products that I use on my face. So if you're like, Haley, what is that lip? What are those shadows? That will be linked down below. What else is going on? I don't know. I talked about Stephen King earlier. 
this book my favorite book ever by Stephen King is The Bizarre of Bad Dreams. I love that book so much because I lose interest so quick. Every time I read, I always have to read like two or three books at the same time. Not like at the same time, but like around the same time. Stephen King's Everything's Eventual 14 Dark Tales, 14 short stories in one big book. I'm also a Gemini, so I just always, I always gotta, I always gotta keep it going, you know? I also wanted to say this. I don't think I'm going to be continuing to post on Friday specifically anymore. I'm just going to go to videos once a week just because with like my schedule sometimes I make it on Friday sometimes I don't make it on Fridays and the days I don't make it on Fridays I feel really bad because I look forward to it and I know you guys look forward to it as well. So I think I'm just going to post just once a week randomly and then if you want to like save that video to watch it on Friday you can definitely do that. So yeah, that's going to be my new schedule for 2022. I also want to do more vlogs in 2022 like I did with my treehouse video. That was so much fun. Oh yeah, I got new posters. That's something. That one fell because that's 2021. Amber Scholl, every year, because I want to be her so bad, every year she makes a like, mood board for the year. And so last year I decided to do it. When I tell you mostly like everything on this mood board came true i don't know if it's just a mixture of this and like manifestation and whatnot this it says 143,000, and now i have like over 500,000, which is insane this was my goal for 2021 i wanted to express more gratitude and i've been doing that like every single morning i put down a car and i ended up getting a car this year so i think that's all i need to say um i hope you guys enjoyed and do something that makes you happy today.